Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Defence Group BAE Systems has added another vehicle to its South African developed RG range with the unveiling of the RG35 at a defence exhibition in England this week. I am joined in studio by Engineering News Senior Contributing Editor Keith Campbell who attended the exhibition in London. Keith, welcome to Second Take. Can you tell us more about the RG35 and talk a bit about the development of this new vehicle? The RG35, as you say, is the latest product from BA Systems, Land Systems South Africa, which is based in Benoni. It has two uh, routes in development. On the one side, the, it is developed from the experience gained first with the Rattle, armored infantry fighting vehicle. Rattle means honey badger in English. Um, this was one of the first armored infantry fighting vehicles ever developed anywhere in the world. Uh, from that, about three years ago, uh, the Benoni company developed a vehicle called the Iqwa. Now, Iqwa is the short stabbing spear or assegai that was the characteristic weapon of the 19th century Zulu armies. Um, like the Rattle, it was a 6x6 uh, armored vehicle. The other route for development was the company's mine uh, protected vehicle pro uh, program, specifically the RG31. Now, they've taken experience from the Rattle Iqwa line and from the RG31 line and combined them into this new vehicle, which is a 6x6 uh, armored fighting vehicle with a V-shaped mine protected hull. That is the uh, legacy from the RG31. So it combines mine protection with greater general conventional warfare combat capability. Uh, it's got a payload of about 15 tons, which means it can carry uh, extra armor. It's designed to accommodate 120 millimeters of extra armor on the V-shaped bottom of the hull and 50 millimeters extra armor on the, hu on the hull sides. This greatly increases its ability to withstand powerful improvised explosive devices or more modern anti-armor rockets. The big problem with existing mine protected vehicles is the growing size and power of IEDs, as they're called, um, which requires more and more armor, which makes them heavier and heavier, and is beginning to uh, overstress them, ex uh, reduce the power they can generate, reduce their mobility, and so on. Keith, are there any new features with the RG35? Indeed, uh, there are. There are uh, two related features of great significance. Firstly, the engine is not mounted either at the front or the rear of the vehicle, which is normal in armored vehicles, but is mounted at the side. Uh, among other things, this means it can be removed uh, very easily. It takes only 30 minutes to uh, remove what they call the power pack, which is the engine gearbox assembly. This creates a lot more internal volume than is normal with armored vehicles, uh, 15 cubic meters. Uh, that greatly increases the flexibility of what you can do inside the vehicle. In this basic form, it can carry a driver and 15 infantry, uh, but you can have different variants of the vehicle. Now, the other very important uh, aspect of this, they had to develop a new transfer gearbox to handle the fact that the engine is mounted at the side. Now the transfer gearbox was developed by sister company, BA Systems Land Systems Gear Ratio, uh, which is also a South African company. A further great advantage is that this has opened the way for the vehicle to use what's called hybrid electric drive. The vehicle is designed for but not with hybrid electric drive. Now this is not a new concept. It's been used for many decades by railways all over the world. On the railways, it's called diesel electric drive. Uh, in the, and apparently, it's also used in buses now. Now, the thing with hybrid electric drive is that the diesel motor ceases to drive the vehicle itself and becomes a diesel generator. And what you have is an electric motor is attached to each of the wheels. In the case of the RG35, the wood be six electric motors. The, the uh, diesel unit acts as a generator providing power to the electric motors uh, 
driving the wheels. Um, in the long run, this means you can eliminate the entire drivetrain. You do not need a drivetrain. You do not need axles. Uh, you can also uh, fit batteries. And so you can uh, use the diesel engine to power the batteries. And when you want to go silent, you switch the diesel off and draw power from the batteries to the electric motors. So your vehicle is still moving, but it's moving silently. Uh, the the uh, basic vehicle displayed also uh, has a new uh, turret, manually operated uh, turret carrying machine gun. And that new turret was developed by another system company, Land Systems Dynamics, which is based in Pretoria. Now, has BAE Systems secured a launch customer for the RG35? No, they have not. They are very confident that this vehicle will sell. Uh, they believe the market runs into the thousands. They're targeting it mainly on uh, developing countries because um, it fills, uh, it creates a new category of vehicle, the company uh, says. Uh, you know, major armies can afford to have dedicated combat vehicles and dedicated mine protected vehicles. This provides uh, armies with uh, more restricted budgets with a vehicle that can do both. It's not the only 6x6 six six armoured vehicle available in the world, but it's a lot better protected than any other 6x6 six six vehicle. So it provides the uh, combat capabilities of an 8x8 eight eight vehicle uh, with the reduced cost weight of a 6x6 six six vehicle. By the way, the RG35 is intended as a family vehicle. A family of vehicles, they are working on a 4x4 four four version. Uh, it could be submitted to the British Army's Light Protected Patrol Vehicle Program if uh, that has a category um, big enough to accommodate it. It's not clear yet exactly what the parameters of the LPP vehicle are. And it could uh, very well be submitted to the South African Army's Project Sapula. Uh, but uh, they don't, the company does not expect that to really eventuate for another two, three years. But they're confident that they will be able to sell thousands of these on the world market. Keith, thank you very much and thanks for joining us on Second Take. That's the Second Take show for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis.